on your Women's Day today, your theme is Godly Women Walking in the Light. Godly Women Walking in the Light. I'm going to read from that same passage of scripture that we heard earlier today, John chapter 8, and I'm only going to read one verse, okay? As we consider godly women walking in the light, the Bible tells us in John chapter 8, verse 12, the New King James Version reads this way, and whatever version you have is fine. One verse. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Jesus is talking. If you have the King James Version of Scripture, you see that those words are in red. Many of us know that that means Jesus is speaking. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And so on today, I want to let you know that if you're walking in the light of Jesus, there's something about your walk. There's something about your walk. You know, if we were to consider this world, it really can be a dark place. The world can be so dark that when we look at today's news or if we look at a magazine in a grocery store, if we people watch at the mall, the world can be dark. If we just listen to a song and if we were to review the lyrics, if we watch violence in the movies, we would get a glimpse of darkness. Again, the world, this world can be a dark place. Really, this world can be so dark that parents want to protect their children from it. Elders don't want to come out of the house. And everyone else is looking over their shoulders. The world can be a dark place. I was looking at a news broadcast just the other day. And I was looking at Durham Police Department's report. Oh, it was some darkness in that report. They reported that from January 1 to June 30th, homicides have gone up 4.3%. 24 homicides in Durham. Not only that, but rapes are up 8.8% in Durham, North Carolina. I told you that this world could be a dark place. Aggravated assaults are up. 6.1%, 605 aggravated assaults just between January 1, 2024 and June 30 of 2024. Even robberies, 226 robberies. So then church, concealed carry permits are at an all-time high. You know, the practice of carrying a concealed firearm on one's person in public. It has become increasingly popular. And I hear that racists in America, they're targeting black women behind this voting season. But I have news for them on today. When we think about concealed carry, you need to know you roll up on a black woman. Bibles ain't the only thing that some of us are carrying. This world can be a dark place. Watch who you roll up on. But we must know that in spite of the world being a dark place, at the end of the day, just because you're surrounded by darkness doesn't mean you have to live in it. I said just because you're surrounded by darkness doesn't mean you have to live in it. It was Mr. Frederick Douglass, born into the United States system of enslavement, who rejected darkness as his place of residence. I told you just because you're surrounded by darkness doesn't mean you have to live in it. It was Mr. Frederick Douglass. He could not live in the darkness of shackles, abuse, and neglect. He could not live in the darkness of cruel labor and children being torn from their mothers. Frederick Douglass decided that he would not live in darkness. 
He cannot live with fathers being ostracized from their families, utter disregard for human life, forbidden to learn how to read. Church, I told you. Just because you are surrounded by darkness doesn't mean you have to live in it. You see, one day, Mr. Frederick Douglass, he decided to escape darkness. And he had a great testimony after he escaped darkness. He walked out of darkness. He said, my testimony is, I prayed for freedom 20 years, but I received no answer until I prayed with my legs. Frederick Dark, Barry Douglas, he walked out of darkness. So the fact is, if life is dark for you today, then this is a good time to check your walk. I said, if life is dark for you today, this is a good time for you to check your walk. I didn't say check your toes. I didn't say check your feet. I didn't say check your shoes. I didn't say that. I said check your walk. I didn't even say it had to be a crip walk, a power walk, or a stroll. I said you need to check your walk. Because the fact of the matter is, Jesus is calling people out of darkness into the marvelous light every day, and some of us are still playing games. If, if your life is messy, if you're frustrated, if you just can't seem to figure it out, if you have a bad attitude, if you're frustrated, if you're uneasy, you have to ask yourself, am I really walking? In the light? Am I really walking in? What am I walking in? My shoes might be nice, but what am I walking in? My suit may look good, but what am I walking in? I'm wearing this dress, but what am I walking in? We must understand that people who walk in the light, you know, if you walk in the light, you know who Jesus is. When we look at our scripture today, just one scripture, one verse, when we look at John chapter 8 verse 12, those who heard Jesus' words, they knew that he was making a declaration of deity. Some people didn't like it, but Jesus kept on talking. Some people didn't like it, but Jesus knew who he was. So then they could not silence him even though they didn't like what he was saying. Jesus was making a declaration of deity. I am the light of the world. You've seen many lights, but ain't nothing ever been. I am the light of the world. He's conveying to these people who he really is. And I like Jesus. Throughout his earthly ministry, he, he, he made many declarations of deity through the language of I am. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. So church, when you know who Jesus is, his I am language should shape your reality. It's not about what you say or what they say or what they said to you. Jesus' I am language ought to shape your reality. Well, what do you mean, McCoy? I'm saying that now we need to move from this being theoretical to it being practical. You see, Jesus says I am. Jesus said, I, what do you mean, McCoy, that this language should shape my reality? Well, I am. Huh? If Jesus says, I am, and you are following Jesus, then it makes no sense for you to walk around talking about what you ain't. If Jesus says, I am, why would I walk around saying, I ain't? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. This means that he was claiming his divinity. But in your humanity, you're talking about what you ain't. I ain't a good student. I ain't a good wife. That, that's not proper English anyway. I ain't a good worker. I ain't a good wife. I ain't a good husband. I ain't a good son, a good person. I ain't nothing. I ain't this and I ain't that. You better watch your words. Watch how you talk about yourself. You're made in the image of God, walking around talking about what you ain't when God has already told us I am. And because I 
am, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Oh, that's practical right there. I know how to wake up in the morning and say, I am a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I am all that God said I could be. Put that ain't down and pick up the I am. You are not an ain't. You are a saint. Don't forget about the S. <laughs> I say you're not an ain't. You are a saint. Out of, out of sheer generosity, do you know what God has done for you? Out of sure, sheer generosity, God has you in right standing with him through Jesus. You're not an ain't. You're a saint. You're supposed to know who Jesus is when you walk in the light. And when you walk in the light, then you know who that makes you. When you walk in the light, you know who that makes you. Jesus made it clear those that follow him have the light that they need to live. So then that means practically speaking, that means that every day I get up, I have to put on the light. I have to put on Jesus every day. And I know that that can be a struggle. <laughs> You know the world will try to make you take off Jesus. You get up in the morning and you put Jesus on. All you can see is Jesus. But then they get on your nerves and you start peeking. You see Jesus when you wake up, but they, they say something. They don't have any business talking to me like that. So you start peeking. And before you know it, you start to say something like, they're going to make me take off my religion. And before you know it, you're no longer walking in light. You're walking in darkness because you have decided that you would let somebody else take control of your day. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And you have to decide that you're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Don't take off Jesus. Don't allow anybody to make you spiritually disrobe. That's what's wrong with a lot of Christians now. We're walking around spiritually naked so everybody can get to you with everything they say and do. But when you put on Jesus and you keep Jesus on, you can walk in a dark world and say, I'm walking in the light. No matter what you think about me, I'm walking in the light. No matter what you say about me, I'm walking in the light. Because you know Jesus. Everybody doesn't know Jesus. So they're walking in whatever they decide to walk in. But you, you are supposed to know better. Keep, keep Jesus on. And again, I, I know, I know it's a struggle. But the good news is Jesus knows all about our struggle. You heard it before, haven't you? Jesus knows all about our struggles i have to sing it to myself sometimes he will guide till my day is done anybody need a friend today anybody need a friend today there's not a friend I don't care how many you have on Facebook. Like the Lord, the Jesus. <laughs> no, not one. No, not one. Hey, Jesus is your friend. No matter where you go, you're never by yourself because you're walking in the light. God got that messy sin and restored us to where God wants us to be. But you know, the enemy is tricky. The enemy is so tricky that the enemy will say things to you to make you think that you're not walking in the light. Jesus already said that those who follow me, that's what the scripture said. Jesus said, I am the light of the world and when you follow me, you're not walking in darkness. But the enemy is always trying to trick us. <laughs> you say you're following the light. <laughs> you say you're following. Ah, trying, you say you're following the light, but look at you. Looks like you're wobbling to me talking about your walking in the light. Wobble, wobble, wobble. 
<laughs> look, look at you. You see, the enemy talks to you in the way that you're used to being talked to. That's why you have to be able to identify these voices that you hear. Because the enemy will set it up to a place where you'll say, oh, something said. If it's the devil, you better know that's the devil. If it's the Holy Spirit, you better know it's the Holy Spirit. And if you are in the way of God, you better get out of the way so that you can hear what God is saying. Because the enemy is trying to get your attention. You say, but I see you wobbling. And not only that, sometimes you fall. If that's what walking in the light looks like, then you may as well give up. Why do you still go to church? Why don't you stay home like these other people do? I mean, after all, you're wobbling. Why, why don't you stop paying your tithes and giving your offering? I mean, do you really? I mean, that is so Old Testament. Making you wobble. But church, the enemy, even in the enemy trying to discourage you, you have to remember that even if you wobble, God can work with a wobble. I said God can work with a wobble. God, anybody ever wobbled in life? <laughs> God can work with a wobble. And you have to know that even when you fall, if you fall, you have to get up, recover, and keep on walking. I said you have to get up recover and keep on walking have you ever fallen before did you get up and then you recovered and you kept on walking well spiritually you have to do the same thing whenever you fall whenever you wobble you have to know that you're a follower of Jesus so God is right there with you and when you're walking in the light there's something about your walk I say when you're walking in the light there's something about your walk. A child of God never walks alone. You need to know that a child of God never walks alone. I told someone the other day, they said something about me traveling to different places and, you know, concerned about me going by myself. Why did they say that? I had to let them know. When you walk in the light, you're never walking alone. You see, when I show up, we're at least three deep. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Oh, you don't hear me now. When I walk into the room, I'm never walking by myself because I'm walking in the light. So God, my Father, is there if I get a little wobbly. And the Son is there even when I don't want to act right. And Lord knows the Holy Spirit directs my path. And don't let me bring my ancestors in. I'm talking about my foreparents who prayed for me. They may not be here now, but I enter a room as if 3,000 of them. So I'm rolling up in here deep. Stop thinking that you're by yourself because you don't have a soulmate. Stop thinking that you're by yourself because they don't want to get in the car and go with you. We have to give God more credit than that. Because the fact of the matter is, the enemy is going to keep trying to bother us. But when we walk in the light, the enemy has to watch us walk. I said when we walk in the light, the enemy has to watch us walk. And I'm not talking about us together. No, no, no. I'm talking about when you go somewhere, you have to always remember, watch us walk. The enemy is watching Jesus and you walk together. You know Mahalia said, Jackson said, walk with me, Lord, walk with me. You ever heard that song? Walk with me, Lord, walk with me. She knew she needed him while I'm on this tedious journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Do y'all sing those kind of songs that, do you see? Every time you walk, you're not walking by yourself. The enemy has to watch us walk, Jesus and me. Oh, I know, I might pass through the waters, but I won't be alone. Watch us walk. Jesus and me. When I pass through the rivers, the rivers won't overtake me. Watch us walk. Jesus and me. When I'm walking through the fire, I shall not be burned. The flame won't kindle me. Watch us walk. Jesus, I told you there's something about your walk. When you walk with Jesus, there's something about your 
walk. And somebody said, oh, I know what it is. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. So whether I go to the right or I go to the left or I go forward, I know that God is with me. Do you know who you're walking with today? Don't play with it. Do you know who you're walking with today? Well, if you don't know who you're walking with today, I have an invitation for you. I said, if you don't know who you're walking with today, I have an invitation for you. You see, my foreparents said, they said, walk in the light, baby. Beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shines bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Somebody's got it. Jesus, 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 the light of the world. And you need to know that that light died for you at Calvary. That light, he, he carried an old rugged cross for you. That light, you don't have to live in darkness because he was laid down on that cross and they put nails in his hands and they put nails in his feet. Oh, I'm telling you what the light did for you on today. Anybody know anything about the light? Oh, I'm just talking about Jesus. You have to know that Jesus died for you. They beat the light. Anybody know about Jesus? They, they, they beat the light and they put a crown of thorns on the head of the light. And when they put those thorns, the blood came streaming down. I'm talking about the light on today. What they did was they pierced the light in his side and he bled for you and for me. I'm talking about the light. Oh, they crucified the light, but you know what they should have done with that light. <laughs> you know what they should have done with that light. They should, what they should not have done. They should not have lifted the light because when they lifted the light, you see the light had already said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So I say thank you, Jesus, for being the light of the world. Anybody glad about the light? I say thank you, Jesus, for protecting us each and every day. You ought to thank Jesus for taking care of your children as it's time to go to school. Do you care about the light? You ought to thank Jesus for making sure that you are protected on the highways and the byways. Anybody thank God for the light? You ought to thank Jesus for being there to hold you in the wee hours of the night when you were crying about something that you could tell nobody about. Does anybody care about the light? You ought to thank God for a church with a pastor that cares about you to pray for you and to be there for you in love. Does anybody care about the light? You ought to thank God for your mama who prayed for you when you weren't smart enough to come to the Lord. Does anybody care about the light? You ought to thank God for fathers. Fathers who rear children in the right direction. Anybody care about the light? You ought to thank God that no matter who goes into the White House, that God is still King of Kings. God is still Lord of Lords. God is still able to protect us. Does anybody care about the light? You ought to thank God that you're able to come into the house of the Lord because there are places in this world where you can't worship your God freely. Does anybody care about the light? You ought to thank God that you had the activity of your limbs to come into this place on today. The mind regulated to give God glory. Does anybody care about the light? Do you know the highest praise? Does anybody care about the light? Does anybody know that he's worthy? Does anybody care about the light? Anybody enter into his gates with thanksgiving? Anybody care about the light? And into his courts with praise? Anybody care about the light? Be thankful unto him and praise his name. Anybody care about the light? For the Lord is good. Anybody care? The Lord is good. Anybody care? The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Let's praise the light on today. Give the light praise. Give the 
the light praise. Give the light praise. Because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. And that's the word of God. To God be the glory.